Okay, so I'd like to give a bit of an update on the status of this MIP 410 Legend project. So a few weeks ago, I made an overview video of the 410 for the chassis that I got. And, um, you know, there are other parts that came with this. Uh, when I purchased it, a few spare parts for the 410, like uh, hub carriers and things and some uh, new front wheels and things. So um, after I made that introductory video, which is for this chassis right here, uh, a very generous subscriber offered to donate to me uh, his or the, the remaining parts he had for his SP2 chain drive conversion kit. Um, so, of course, I took him up on the offer. And so uh, what this effectively means is that I have now two four-wheel drive conversions to do for the RC10, which is great. And that means I can try different things for each conversion. But what I wanted to do here is give uh, a bit of an overview on the SP2 conversion, as well as talk a little bit about um, some of the plans that I have for the, the 410 Legend that maybe I didn't really go over before. So the SP2 conversion kit came out before the 410 Legend kit. Okay, so the 410 Legend was the last of the MIP four-wheel drive conversions for the RC10. The SP2 was in the, was sort of the middle generation, and then before that was a cable... Um, Yes, it was a cable drive system. I don't have that. Those are extremely difficult to find. Uh, but this SP2, uh, basically the, the main differences between the SP2 and the 410 Legend is uh, the front gearbox for the SP2 is a little different. I mean, it's a similar size, but the actual form factor is a little different. There are two mounting holes at the bottom here uh, for the SP2. And so what that means is you have to drill holes through the bottom of the front nose plate on the RC10 uh, in order to mount this front gearbox. <clears throat> now, if we look at the 410 Legend, uh, the mounting actually takes place up against the front shock tower. There are these two screws right here, and I think they just press up against uh, the front shock tower to sort of hold the front gearbox in place. So this isn't actually drilled. You know, it's not uh, attached through screw holes that you drill through the front nose plate. <clears throat> Um, so the only drilling that you have to do actually for the 410 Legend for the standard build is you have to uh, move the mounting holes for the steering rack, the front steering rack, these two mounting holes, one here and one here. Okay, maybe a little hard to see with the lighting. You move those back a little bit uh, and the kit would have given you a template to drill those new holes with. And then you also remove some of the material from the back of the, the front nose plate. This is assuming, by the way, that you have the nose plate that, that's uh, where the rear of the nose plate is flat. Later uh, releases of the nose plate had a V shape, kind of like what you see here. Uh, which, So I imagine if you had one of those nose plates, you wouldn't have to remove this material. Uh, but really, the only drilling you had to do, again, is... Um, <clears throat> to move the front steering rack back. And then they would, and MIP also gave you a shorter steering rack so that you can fit the steering rack and the gearbox all in the, in the front here, okay? So that's the difference, the main difference for the front. For the SP2 build, I won't go through all of these instructions here, but you know, just to show you that they are here, you had to drill holes for both the uh, steering rack as well as the front gearbox and they gave you kind of a template, basically a set of instructions where you could measure out or you could trace it out and then trace it back onto the chassis where you have to cut the holes for the gearbox and where you have to cut the new holes for the steering rack. Uh, and I think, if, if I remember correctly, it's all for the um, front nose plate. Uh, but there was also a piece, oops, making a bit of a mess here. If we look in here, there's there's this bit here. And this guy you could mount onto the uh, chassis itself to act as a belt guide or a chain guide. And that for that, you'd have to drill holes through the chassis uh, somewhere. Again, it's somewhere in these instructions. Uh, right here, that would be your little chain guide. Okay, So you'd have to drill holes in the chassis for that. That doesn't go into the nose plate. So for the chassis that I'm going to mount this chain drive conversion, um, I'm, I would want to use a chassis that isn't 
super duper special. So what do I mean by that? Well, this, for example, is something I just picked up. You may have seen it on eBay. It's a fluorescent orange uh, um, powder coated chassis. Very, very good condition. And uh, I think this would go very nicely with the 410 Legend build uh, or the chain drive. Either one would be great, but I would rather not have to drill holes through this um, as part of the conversion. So this I'm going to allocate to the 410 Legend build. And then for this uh, SP2 conversion here, I do have a re-released World's Car chassis with the milled out you know, sections in the center of the chassis. I think that would be kind of cool to do for um, this chain drive conversion. Now, I keep saying chain drive and you see a belt here. But that's, again, because they did both a chain drive and a belt drive conversion for this SP2. So the chain drive parts are in here, right? You can see there's a little chain in there. And the pulleys uh, for the or the sprockets, whatever you want to call them for the chain, are also in this, this bag right here. <clears throat> so I can do either. Now, the difference between the belt drive in this chassis, or I'm sorry, this conversion... And the belt drive for the 410 is that the pulleys are different. So uh, maybe if I go to the back here, you can see both the rear pulley and the front pulley, the sidewalls of the pulley are smooth. It's kind of an enclosed pulley, okay? And the pulley for the belt drive conversion on the SP2 kit is not, uh, I would say, smooth. It has sort of these teeth sticking out of it. I'm not sure why they made it this way, but that's one... Uh, main way to determine the difference between both of these belt drive conversions. All right. So <clears throat> I think that's, uh, that should more or less cover it. There are other parts in here, like the SP2 came with uh, red uh, steering blocks and black caster blocks. So the 410 came with white caster blocks and white steering blocks. But the actual molding of the part is very similar, if not exactly the same. Um, and there are other bits in here. So this, they also came with um, this aluminum steering rack set. Okay, depending on whether you wanted the part, the half of the steering rack where you put your, uh, where you connect it to your servo straight or bent, they gave you both options. Uh, They're uh, uh, bushing uh, uh, mounted, so you can take these out and put bearings on them if you want. Um, so basically, part of the reason I think why they had you do a whole bunch of drilling on this chassis is this steering rack is actually the stock steering rack size. The 410 Legend had a smaller steering rack to better accommodate uh, the presence of the gearbox in the front of the chassis. Okay, so this this SP2 conversion is going to be more or less a classical build. I'm not going to try any crazy tricks or anything with it, but I think for the 410 Legend, there's a good opportunity to play some, some games. So hey, let me just close this up. All right, let's put that there. So for the 410 Legend, I don't have all the parts here, but I'll start with this. One thing I was thinking is to do a, a 91 Worlds type of uh, conversion or build for the 410 Legend. And what I mean by that is you go if you go back and look at the uh, um, 91 Worlds chassis that Masami used to win the Off-Road Worlds, it was basically it had a, an RC-10T type of front shock tower. It had long front shocks. Okay. It also had a double deck chassis, which you can get from composite craft today. If you order them, uh, running the belt through that composite craft chassis, I don't think is possible without, uh, drilling out or, or cutting out parts at the top of the chassis. So I'm not going to do the composite craft type chassis, but what I am effectively going to do is to, you know, take this guy and put a 10 T front nose, and front tower and a front end uh, from the 10T onto this uh, and, you know, basically have a longer wheelbase in addition to the longer front shocks uh, as part of that build. Now, because I'd be running the longer wheelbase, that would mean that I need a longer belt. And I did some measuring and I managed to find from Polybelt, they do make belts that should be about the right size. So the belt for the 410 Legend is three millimeters wide and has a three millimeter pitch and I don't remember how many teeth it is, but I just measured the increase in length you would get from the front wheelbase, multiply it by two, because you have a top and bottom part of the belt that runs across the chassis. And it comes out to somewhere around, I think, uh, 311 or 310 teeth. So Polybelt has a four millimeter wide, three millimeter pitch, 311 tooth belt. I ordered two of those. 
And so um, the four millimeter width does fit within the pulley here. Okay, it might be a little on the tight side, but it does fit. So uh, that should be enough to enable the longer wheelbase from the world's type front end. And the other thing that I'm thinking of doing is getting back to this guy. Um, RPM made a, a world's rear end kit, which basically means uh, they gave you longer rear suspension arms and they gave you this little template here to cut out the rear of the chassis so that you can take the rear uh, arm mount blocks and push them in a little bit to account for the uh, added length of the rear arms. Now, the funny thing is I, I did a little bit of measuring or comparing. These longer rear arms are actually exactly the same length as the Dynotech rear arms that I had used on this build here and also for my runner team car. So there are multiple ways you can do this. Uh, you can, if you want to use the older style wheels, which had a deeper offset and you wanted to retain the correct width for the rear of the chassis, you would have to cut out the chassis as per the, 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 the guide here and then mount the longer arms and, you know, use the standard rear hub carriers and standard rear wheels. Another thing you can do is just to use these arms as is, or use the Dynotech arms, again, the exact same length, and mount them without cutting the chassis. Uh, so that way you have a longer arm that pushes out, and then basically do like a modern conversion uh, for B4 wheels on the team car. Again, like what I have on this guy here and on this guy here, where you run a longer arm, and then the rear hub carrier is an RC10 GT hub carrier that pulls... Uh, the axle back in, and then you mount B4 wheels, and then you're you're good to go. Uh, that'll also get you to the same rear width. So I'm thinking of, of taking that approach uh, with a little bit of a twist. So for the actual drive shafts, let's go back to this guy here. So because this kit here uh, that was donated to me, it did not have the uh, front universals included with it. They must have been lost or missing or something. Not a problem. I can I can deal with that. Um, I would want to use, or I was thinking of using the universals that came with this 410 on this build here, the SP2 build. But that means I have to figure out how to do universals on this kit. So as it turns out, uh, you can go a little Yokomo on this uh, on this type of build here. So. Uh, for the front, for example, you can use uh, the ZC422 Universals, which is for the uh, YZ10 Works rear uh, universal, and it's just about the same length as the front universal that's used for this 410 build. Okay, so uh, that should work fine. And if I'm using Dynotech arms up front as well, uh, the Dynotech arms are longer, but that shouldn't matter because I'm mounting them on the 10T front end, which is narrower. It pulls the front arm mounting points inwards. I should be able to have the same, you know, use the same uh, length universals to make that all work. Now that is a metric uh, universal. So it turns out you can also use the uh, YZ10 870C front hub carrier. It's about the same size as this uh, caster block here and uh, just mount that on the RC10 or Dynotech front arms, and then the 870C uh, front steering knuckle, which you can use the stock magnesium one or um, um, the Andes or RPM nylon ones, or maybe an aluminum one if you could find one of those, uh, like either for the YZ10 or for the Optima Mid, they should mount the same. So you can do basically a YZ10 sort of from the universals out drivetrain at the front, and mount YZ10 wheels with like Suzuki blue aluminum front uh, wheel wheel hubs. You could also do the same thing at the rear. Uh, I am there are a few ways to do that. Yokomo did make uh, wheel hubs that fit onto the RC10 axle so that you can f put Yokomo wheels onto the rear of the chassis. Uh, alternately, what I'd like to do is after I put the long Dynotech arms on there, I think I should be able to fit. Uh, Yokomo YZ10 works rear hub carriers, or I can certainly drill it out to fit, um, you know, onto the RC10, the Dynotech rear arms. And then I'm pretty sure that the YZ10 870C uh, front and rear uh, universals will fit 
at about the same length as the RC10 universals. So then that way you have, you know, basically YC10 front and rear universals, front and rear hub carriers, and front and rear wheels, uh, all on an RC10 four-wheel drive conversion. So that's sort of what I have in mind for how I want to handle the 410 build. Um, the only other thing I have to figure out is the uh, uh, slipper unit here. So the way that this uh, mounts, when I look through the instructions that I was able to find, I'm pretty sure that um, this particular version of the 410 that I have came with a slipper setup for the rear. Uh, after 1992, they released them with the slipper unit. Before that, I think it was locked or something onto the onto the little axle that comes out here. Uh, the problem is when I took this apart, I did not see any slipper pads in here um, or any spring between the nut and and one of the, the the sort of metal plates that goes between the slipper pad and the pulley. So I have to figure out how to get a spring in there and also how I can cut slipper pads to fit in here. Hopefully that shouldn't be too hard, um, but that is something that does appear to be missing here. So not too big a deal, but I'll figure that out. Um, I think those are the main plans that I have that, that, uh, I'm looking to do here. Again, I, I think I mentioned before, I want to try big bore shocks on the 410 build. I think it would just be kind of interesting. Um, maybe put a, a YZ10 belt roller tensioner in here, uh, rather than, you know, take the conventional approach to, to this kit where you add spacers here between the front nose brace and the front nose, uh, to adjust the belt tension. But I'll have to play with all of that later. So basically two types of four-wheel drive conversion projects. Uh, I more or less went over what I plan to do with the 410 build. And for this SP2, I have a few more things to figure out, but more or less a, a classical build um, with like a world's car type of chassis. Um, that's that's the idea that I have in mind for, for this guy here. So uh, I think that should cover it. Um, any questions, you know, post them in the comments section and, uh, thanks for watching.